Welcome to video 46. I found this rabus in the Sonus dedication grid a couple years ago and in that time I've mentioned it in a few videos, interpreting and suggesting what I think it might mean. I recently discovered there are more clues around it and believe they reveal the mother and father of Henry Rosely, the third Earl of Southampton. I first learned about the Sonus dedication grid in videos by Alexander Waugh, who went on an epic run and discovered all these rabuses with the messages in the shapes of crosses and letter I's, I being the first letter of the name Iesus or Jesus. In Latin, T is the nineteenth letter. Though codes in the Shakespeare works occasionally use letters from Greek and Hebrew, they mainly use the twenty-three letter Latin alphabet. T, or Tau, is a cross and represents Jesus or God. It's the key that unlocks the dedication, which, if you count the number of letter T's, there are 19. This is a hint because when the dedication is written out in a 19 grid pattern, you can find messages in the shapes of rabuses. Wad discovered messages that tell us where Edward de Vere is buried. South Cross Isle, St. Peter's, at the Westminster, with the Westminster rabus actually in the shape of the abbey and a letter D in the courtyard indicating the author of the grid, John D. Alexander also found messages that read, Heed Veer's paternity lie, Veer's line, and sine prole m, or mascula, which means without male issue. After seeing what Wad discovered, I eventually searched the grid and found a couple more messages. The first was this, and I believe it tells us what Veer's paternity lie is. I've explained some of it in other videos, but in case you haven't seen them or have forgotten, the rabus is in the shape of scales. According to history, Henry Rosely was born on October 6, 1573, under the astrological sign of Libra, the symbol of which is a set of scales. It's centered in column 12 with the letters H-E-N-P, which is R or Rho in Greek, I-E, followed by four T's. The arm begins in column 7 and reaches across to column 17, spelling the words ensuing sun. Hanging from the arms representing the two bowls are the letters T-E-L-A and R-O-S-E, Tela Rose. I've explained many times why I believe 12 is a cipher for 40, or 4T. In Latin, the twelfth letter is M. In Greek and Hebrew, M is equal to 40. Using this image from Wa's video where he explains the relationship between Jesus, or Iesus, and the number 3, you can see how 12 is equal to 4Ts. And a really simple way to understand it is, 12 is the fourth number that begins with T. There is 2, 3, 10, and the fourth number, 12. Now why I think this is significant here is because some time ago I figured out that the letter T is equal to 19. Four T's add up to 76. The letter spelling Oxford also add up to 76. With Gematria, there's a relationship or commonality between words of equal value, and we have this with Oxford and four T's. So these four T's beginning in column 12, along with the name Henry, I believe are telling us that he's an Oxford. On the grid, there is no column 40, so 12, a cipher for four T, is used. Since 12 is equal to four T's, which is equivalent to Oxford, Everything in column 12 is going to be associated with the name Oxford. And in column 12 are Henry and four T's. I know the H is in column 11 and one of the T's is in column 13, but the center has only one line and is set in column 12. The words ensuing sun are spelled out between columns 7 and 17. I think this is because 17 is Edward de Vere's Earl number and seven may be referring to what would have been his king number. Had de Vere been king, he would have been Edward VII. Even if seven's indicating something else, I think the word son ending in column 17 is another clue as to who the father is. Okay, now Taylor and Rose are going to give us a couple different words to figure out. The first I'm going to read from right to left as an anagram spelling R-O-S-E-T-A-L-E. 
The letter T was silent back in Devere's day, or rather John D's, because he encoded this. R O S E T A L E is pronounced Rosalie, which is how we've been pronouncing Rosalie's name. I think before people pronounced it Rothesley or Risley. Here it's Rosalie. So we have the name Henry Rosalie with four T's, meaning he's in Oxford. The words Taylor Rose also have another meaning. In Spanish, Taylor means cloth, so Taylor Rose is rose cloth. This is referring to the Tudor garment or Tudor mantle worn by kings and queens as symbols of their authority. I've gone over much of this in previous videos, but like I mentioned at the beginning, I recently found something else that I believe tells us who Rosalie's parents were. Before and after the words ensuing sun, highlighted in blue, are the letters E-O and E-R. These are initials. E-O stands for Edward Oxford, and E-R stands for Elizabeth Regina. Regina is Latin for Queen, so E-R are initials for Queen Elizabeth. I know that E-R could stand for Edward Rex, meaning King Edward, but I would argue that ensuing son, representing the child, is in between these two sets of initials, which are on opposite ends. Ensuing means occurring afterwards, or as a result. The ensuing son is the result of what's between E-O and E-R, suggesting a father and mother dynamic, polar opposites on either side of this child. We know that E-O are initials for Edward Oxford, and it just seems logical to me that E-R is for Elizabeth Regina. Also, notice that the E-R initials are printed over the bowl that gives us the letters spelling Rose, possibly hinting at Tudor Rose. Oxford's initials are over the bowl with the letters that can spell et al, which is the Latin abbreviation for and others. The letters already spelled Tela, so I don't know if we're supposed to read it as et al, but if we do, Maybe and others is suggesting Rosalie having more than one father, meaning Edward de Vere and the father whose name he inherited, Henry Rosalie, the second Earl of Southampton. Or maybe it's alluding to other children. More on that later. Something else I recently discovered is, notice beginning column 19, highlighted in blue, are the letters O-T. The O represents a rose, and O-T stands for Rose Cross. We find the same character on the frontispiece of the 1611 King James Bible. Here the O is offset, indicating a Greek tauro cross, or starogram, which has a loop on the right side or right arm of the towel. It's part of a code that's one of three 1740s in the Bible frontispiece explained in video 39 entitled, Verily a Real Bible Code. OT is also part of a code found by Petter Amundsen on page 2 of the Tempest in the first folio. When the OT is replaced with the letters RC for Rose Cross, the acrostic reads, Arcadia, lie there my art. On the grid, what I found is, horizontally connected to the OT are the letters O-R-O. -O. Oro is Spanish and Italian for gold. The name of the secret society said to have met following Elizabeth's excommunication in 1570 was the Brotherhood of the Gold and Rosy Cross. A reference to this name can be found hidden within the sonnet's byline, which I cover in video 40, Shakespeare by 1740 and RT. Also, notice how Oro and the Rose Cross go from columns 17 to 19. This is because the Gamatria value of 17 is equivalent to the letter R and 19 is equivalent to T. RT stands for Rosy Cross. And it's in the shape of a mason's square, a symbol found encoded in other Shakespeare works. I have another video, number 36, entitled Henry Rosalie Rose Prince, where I go over several codes that may possibly reveal similar information about Rosalie's parentage.
These are found not only in the Shakespeare works, but in the catalogs of Honor and Succession, a couple texts sent to me by Chris Johnson, who also posts videos under the name Nobody Oxfordian. Some of the things I point out are curious typesettings, like in the Catalog of Honor, where, in the section about Oxford, following the second wife, there are 17 words, 17 being De Vere's Earl number. Then it reads, Queen Elizabeth was second wife of Edward Vere, Earl of Oxford. And in the Catalog of Succession, on line 17 from the top of the page, there's a similar message. Queen Elizabeth, by whom he had issue, Henry Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford. Even though, on the surface, this is referring to Henry de Vere, if Henry Rosely was Edward's son, he would have been Henry Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford. Speaking of Henry de Vere, Alexander Waugh has a theory that, since Edward de Vere had no male heir, he convinced Henry Rosalie and Penelope Rich to secretly have a child for him, who he then raised as the 18th Earl of Oxford. As always, Waugh presents compelling evidence to back up his claims, so please see his videos to learn more. Now I think Waugh's theory still works with Rosalie being Edward de Vere's son. The rabus with the code sine prole mascula, without male issue, can mean that because Rosalie's the son of Edward de Vere and Queen Elizabeth, De Vere can't claim him, and Henry De Vere is Rosalie's son, so Edward is without male issue. De Vere has a son he can't claim, and a son fathered by another man. This is his paternity lie, and why he's without issue. And if we're supposed to also read Taylor as et al, is it referring to Henry De Vere, meaning there are others, another son, in addition to Rosalie, who was part of this lie. One more thing I want to point out that to me seems obvious. The ensuing sun rabus is in the shape of scales, the astrological sign for Libra. We know that, according to history, Henry Rosalie was a Libra, born on October 6th. Henry de Vere was born on February 24th, making him a Pisces. If the ensuing sun is supposed to be referring to him, then it should be in the shape of a couple fish or the sign of Pisces. But it's not. It scales the birth sign of Rosalie. There are a couple more rabuses. Alexander found the word erite in column 10. Erite is Greek and means excellence or sometimes virtue. He sent it to me and asked if I could see anything else around it. I noticed the letters VHP along the top, like the tip of a spear. In classical Greek, H was sometimes used for the long vowel E, and the Greek letter for R is written like the Latin letter P. VHP translates to VER, vir, which in Latin means truth. So following the rabus messages about Edward de Vere's burial, there's a cross in the shape of a spear. The point or tip spells vir, and erite means virtue. The V-I-R or V-E-R spelling also alluding to Edward Vere. One more rabus I found is in column 13, set between ensuing sun in column 12 and Vere's line in column 14. It's two crosses making a cross of Lorraine, also called a cross of Anjou. The upper cross is comprised of the letters spelling G sign meaning God sign, and the lower cross spells the truth. The reason I think John Dee used a cross of Lorraine or a cross of Anjou is because, according to legend, Melusine de Vere gave birth to the house of Anjou. Melusine was a kind of mermaid, again this is legend, and was also known as the Siren of Alchemy. In sonnets 119 and 114, the words siren and alchemy are italicized, and I think this is a hint at authorship because Melusine and Edward de Vere share the same last name. Sometimes I'll leave comments or preface my videos saying that I don't claim every single thing I find is a legitimate code, that some I just find interesting and the viewer can decide what to make of them. The ensuing sun rabus is not one of those codes. 
I believe it's 100% legitimate, done by design, and with intent. It makes sense to me that if John D. left pretty explicit details telling us where Edward de Vere was buried, he would do the same regarding Vere's paternity lie. Also, like the other rabuses, there's a perfection about it, with all this information in the shape of Libra scales, the symbol of Rosalie's birth sign. The E-O and E-R initials were a brilliant touch. They don't compose the rabus shape, but they're set on either side of ensuing sun, and serve as a simple and effective way for D to let us know who the parents are. Last year, Ron Raffel suggested to me an episode of the Don't Quill the Messenger podcast. The guest, Dorothea Dickerman, explains her theory about the meaning of the first two published works attributed to William Shakespeare, Venus and Adonis, and the Raper Lucrece. The pressure was on Henry Rosely to marry Edward de Vere's daughter. Of course, if Rosely was de Vere's son, this would have been incest. Dorothea proposes that, allegorically, Venus and Adonis is about Rosely's parents, Edward de Vere and Queen Elizabeth. And Lucrece lets Rosalie know that Elizabeth Vere, Edward de Vere's daughter, was fathered by another man. Therefore, if Rosalie did marry Elizabeth Vere, he would not be committing incest. Despite these poems and their effusive dedications, the young Earl instead married Elizabeth Vernon. It's an interesting take on these works, and I'm including a link in the description for anyone who wants to hear the details. Also, in Venus and Adonis and Lucrece are codes, possibly the earliest examples indicating the Rosy Cross, 1740, and twice 11. I go over everything in video 40. The rabuses in the Sonnets dedication grid are among the most extraordinary of the Shakespeare codes. To learn more about them and why Edward de Vere was William Shakespeare, please see Alexander Waugh's videos. If you have any thoughts on the ensuing Sun Rabus or on anything I mentioned in this post, please leave a comment. If you're interested in my findings regarding Rosalie, please see video 36, Henry Rosalie Rose Prince. And to learn more about what I found in Venus and Adonis, Lucrece and the Sonnets, please see video 40, Shakespeare by 1740 and RT. Thank you to Christopher Johnson for the catalogs of Honor and Succession, Ron Raphael, Patrick Jennings, and to Alexander Waugh. Though, to be clear, he does not believe Rosalie was the son of Edward de Vere and Elizabeth. Thank you for watching.